Okay. Well, thanks for taking time today to join us for this uh, monthly installment of our of our cyber webinar series. And today we're going to be focusing on the telephone toll fraud aspects of of cyber crime. Um, this is one of the uh, the new coverages that we added to this to our cyber package policy at, at Shinner. We saw that there were some significant challenges in the marketplace. We heard from several brokers about you know some of the gaps that we've known about but have, are starting to come up a little bit more regularly. And so this was an area that we thought was was important for us to address in the policy. So as we uh, as we look at it, you know, just for a, a Quick recap: When you're looking at you know claim sources for cyber, these are your your top claim sources. Um, but when you're looking at the cyber toll fraud, it's not like someone's lost a laptop or lost a mobile device that actually causes it. It's it's really being driven by hackers. Um, and this is a it's a fascinating area that that a lot of people just don't even think about very much. And so what happens is once a client ends up going on to a voice over internet protocol, so basically they bundle their internet and their telephone uh, service, they have basically that's now into a network system. It's also tied into the internet network system. So you've got an exposure where there's an access point and there are certain controls that are put on the on the system, and there are certain controls that may not be put on the system. And so, what happens in this? And if we take a look at a, a claims example, company decides to put in their their telephone system. Uh, they bundle it with their internet coverage the, or internet uh, access. They're, they're working with their their provider, and that contract is um, is a, an agreement to pay contract. So they've agreed that any charges that are put into that when they when they get that system, any charges on the system, it's already agreed to pay. So a couple months later, they they walk into uh, their telephone bill and it's four hundred thousand dollars, and they haven't seen any of those types of bills before. So they look at it, and almost all the charges are coming from Saturday calls that were rerouted internationally, um, and they go through all the staff and. No one's been in the in the office. So lo and behold, hackers have breached their system. Um, and then what they do is electronically they route hundreds of calls through the system, often to a premium 900 number. Well, so you've got a contract that the client has agreed that they'll pay the the charges that go on on to their system. That goes off to another system that has the 900 number that has an agreement to pay and often sometimes another one that it, it routes out to to make sure that there's a jump so it's harder to recover anything but there's no there's no recovery because it's all on an agreement to pay by contract so the other thing is the client isn't going to find out about this loss until after it's already done gone and paid by by the broadband carrier so now you've got the broadband carrier who's out the money. You've got the contract to pay that says, well, it already got paid. This is your bill that's due. It was charged through your, your organization. So where does that fall in, in the insurance? So when you look at crime coverage, the challenge with the crime coverage is crime coverage is for money or securities that are stolen. What's actually stolen here is telephone tolls. It's telephone charges. So that's one of the problems that, that people have come up against in trying to get a crime carrier to, to pick this coverage up. When you look at the cyber policy, a cyber policy is designed for the network intrusion, getting the network back up and running again, taking care of data loss, taking care of liabilities off of the data loss. But it's not designed for first party financial losses. So what's left? Well then we're left with a gap in the market. And so that was why we really felt strongly that this is something that, that is a great place for us to, to provide something 
unique in the marketplace that really does fill a gap that, that the market is, is having. And there have been a lot of conversations for years now about where should this first party loss fall, uh, whether it's telephone toll fraud or whether it's um, the fraudulent transfer uh, where a client is deceived in their accounting department into sending money to a bad routing number for a, a fraudulent request or fraudulent approval from internally. Uh, so when you look at those ty types of gaps, there's that gap of that first party financial loss that's been there and everyone has been looking in the marketplace saying, well, it doesn't belong with us, it belongs with crime. And crime's been saying, well, it doesn't belong with us, it's not money or securities. And so, and it's not a mistake or it's not uh, something that, that's happened, you've freely given that away or you haven't had your protection on your, your telephone system. So when you're looking at, at this gap, this is the coverage that, that we're focused on trying to provide to all the carrier, the clients. One thing to, to note about this um, is that in the policy, this is the only place where we have controls required in the cyber protection package. So if you look at the, the crime endorsement when you see it and you get a specimen policy, the crime endorsement actually has, the, cyber, the digital crime endorsement has a, uh, a paragraph in it, one of the exclusions, that the client actually has to have some controls based on this system. So one of the controls they have to have is a three strikes and you're out. If someone tries to log in three times and they're unsuccessful, it's going to lock them out of the system so that you can't just keep pinging the system to try to find out what the, the password is. Uh, the second is that the passwords have to be changed uh, frequently. So just so that it's not the same password for three years so that as people leave the company, maybe a disgruntled former employee leaves, goes ahead and publishes it, goes ahead and utilizes it, however that ends up working out. So that regular uh, change of the password uh, so that the, the system ends up being protected, that is part of the policy. So it's, a, it's an area that, that also has hit the news. So this isn't just from a couple of anecdotal stories we've gotten from brokers where they've struggled with it to get it covered in, in the news, but this is actually a New York Times article talking about the billions that are being stolen through through the, tele, the phone hackers. And that's what we were really talking about when we talk about this policy and this coverage in particular. So uh, today's session is a fairly short one. It's fairly direct and to the point. We've got some good examples here. Um, but I do want to open up to see if anyone has any questions uh, up at this point. And you can simply type them into the, the questions box and send them over, and we'll wait a few minutes to make sure uh, we're able to pick those up and, and answer them if anyone has anything. And the other thing is, if you want, we can also open the line. So if don't want to end up typing into the box and you want to just open a question, the lines are open, we can open those up. Okay, so the, the first question came in is, please elaborate how the cash gets into the perpetrator's pocket. So that's a great question. I wasn't completely clear with that. So when the hackers do the electronic routing through the system and they open up uh, multiple lines and they run it electronically and have those lines running into that 900 number, they actually own the 900. So they get an offshore 900 number generally they run that off and that's how they end up getting the payment. Um, so the payment ends up coming through the broadband system and paying to them uh, because it's under contract to be to be received. Uh, so that's how they pick up their payment. That's a common one. 
Um, I have heard people talking about um, the, the possibility of opening up or they'll sell the long distance up front and then route it through to international sources. So they basically just open up the lines and route it through. But the one that, that I've seen the most uh, detailed claims descriptions on have been them setting up the 900 number and then running the money through and having those charges that, that go through and get paid by the broadband company. Okay, so one of the questions was, how does the hacker make money off of this transfer of calls? And I think it's related to the, the first one as well, which is um, either they own that 900 number or they're charging, say, 10 cents a minute to call to anywhere in the world, and then all those international calls are actually um, going through and they have no expense on it. They just take in the money. It's sort of like uh, if you get your credit card stolen and someone goes over to the gas pump and they just say, hey, give me $10 and I'll fill up your your 25-gallon uh, tank for 10 bucks, And they just keep the charge open and then they just keep filling up every car that comes through and they take the cash in hand. So a couple of ways that they can perpetrate it. Okay, so the next question was uh, asking about um, tracking of the, of the charges if it's running through a 900 number. Um, one of the things that one of the things that um, that the, the tracking challenge is often it's rerouted, so that's where they'll reroute the calls. Um, and the second thing is most of the time these 900 numbers are set up offshore, so that's a problem with trying to get across. Uh, country lines and get into certain areas that may not have that that strong tracking capability um, or uh, it's rerouted immediately off and the money's gone anyway. So you can go ahead and track the 900 number but they can shut it down and move it into a bank account and it's already gone. So the next question we had was with respect to um, real estate agencies. And this is actually, when we, when we look at, we were focused on the telephone toll fraud today, but uh, this actually is a, is a, a great segue for the, our next call next month, um, which is regarding uh, the other portion of the crime policies, uh, crime section of our policy, which is um, deceptive transfers, uh, which I had mentioned earlier, the enticement or the deception um, in getting a client to actually release funds from their own accounting department. So the question has to do with especially real estate agencies um, where the coverage applies with respect to um, incorrect accounts being emailed with, with respect to uh, especially with customers. So, um, it, so the answer is typical for, for specialty lines, it depends. So it depends on who's being deceived, how they're being deceived, and how it's happened. So there, there are several scenarios. One of the scenarios is if the real estate agent's uh, system has been hacked, their, their email has been compromised, and an email has been sent with the details of a given transaction off to the client, now suddenly you've got a network security um, problem. So that actually falls into the cyber coverage if the client then transfers the money off to the offshore bank account and they've lost their deposit, um, may end up losing their, their purchase entirely. Um, in other circumstances, sometimes it can be the client that ends up being the recipient of the hack. Um, and then, you know, the, the, in other circumstances, we've also read about um, the title companies being involved in the in the mix with it. So there there have been there are a bunch of different angles that it can come from, and it depends on the circumstances. But uh, that's 
that's one of the, the things that looking at the cyber and making sure of understanding all the implications that could be impacting a client um, is helpful. And we'll talk about it more in, in our call next month. Okay, so how much does coverage add to the premium? Um, we have we have the coverage uh, built out. Uh, it adds it's it's included in the premium. We'll quote it automatically in most cases. Um, and but it, it, in a total perspective of the of the policy, it's actually a very small percentage of the premium. Um, so it's uh, it's based on um, crime calculations for for this particular coverage. So. Okay, so how do people get uh, how do how do hackers get people to trust and dial in for the the phone fraud? So, if they're selling discounted discounted inter, uh, discounted uh, international calling, um, that's that's pretty easy. If the phone doesn't go through and they don't actually actually connect you to who you're calling internationally, uh, you hang up and and don't end up paying for it. Um, so a lot of people will look for those those opportunities. We, be toll when they when they're sending it through with with an 800 number or a 900 number excuse me the 900 number is actually just electronic routing of opening lines that's not even anyone calling through for a 900 number they literally electronically open the lines um, route all the calls through through the the, the clients uh, multiple lines that they would have on their system and then out to the 900 number so they're racking up the bill rather quickly with just sitting and opening a line with an electronic opening. Okay, so how common or uncommon is it for phone carriers to reimburse customers for fraudulent charges? Well, one of the things to remember is this is actually in the broadband contract. So it's not from a, a telephone company, uh, it's from a broadband carrier. So a little like on demand. Once you click on the movie, you've rented it um, to see the new Star Wars. You've rented it. Once you click on your, you're getting it, and you owe that charge. It's the same thing with these toll charges. It's a it's a, a agreement to pay um, in the contract, and so the agreement to pay also goes between the contract providers. So. If someone else is providing them with content or giving them that they're accessing another broadband system, um, that's also an agreement to pay. And so the payments are run that way automatically. So that's where the challenge comes in is the company's already out. The broadband company's already paid for it. The money's already out. So it's under an agreement to pay situation. It's unlike credit card companies. A lot of times people think, well, it's like credit card companies. You don't have to pay when it's fraudulent charge. It's a different situation when you're talking about the broadband charges for um, for these 900 numbers and the telephone charges. Okay, so one of the questions was, in what instances would we exclude the coverage? Um, one of the concerns we have is we want to make sure that the insurers at least have controls in place. So even with our short form, our short form um, portal client confirmation app. So clients that, that are eligible for our portal um, and then the client confirms at the end um, with their application uh, what information we've underwritten from. They also have one question additional that is around crime controls, so internal control controls for crime. And they're the usual types of inter in internal controls that we're looking to see that, that most companies do implement. Um, so if we have uh, circumstances where someone comes through and they really aren't executing any internal controls for their crime, that's going to be a concern for us. And that's just a, a good basic business um, mode of operation is to have those, those controls in place. And crime in general, but then especially the policy itself does have that exclusion. So we want to make sure that everyone is aware um, when they purchase the telephone toll fraud, there are just certain controls that have to be in place. They're written into the policy, changing passwords on a, on a regular basis, and then also three strikes are out and uh, 
if you try a fourth time, you're locked out of the system. Um, those are those are basic controls that are key to what is a you know multi-billion dollar industry. And as hackers get more savvy to where can I get quick money and not have to work too hard, they're working more and more into the small and middle market. Uh, and that's that's one of the things that we also wanted to focus on was making sure that this marketplace had an easy way to, to be able to get coverage in place, substantial coverage, um, and have protection as the as the cyber attacks start being generated more and more their way. Okay. So it looks like we're about out of questions. Thank you all for your participation. That was great. Thanks for taking your time, uh, taking time out of your day to, to spend with us this afternoon. I hope it was informative and uh, hope to hear from you and, and uh, have another good conversation next month uh, for our next webinar. Have a good day.